from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, MMA legend Anderson Silva, with Gina Grad on news, Paul Bryan on sound effects, and Chris Loxamana is back for some trending topics. And now, a man who thinks NFTs are WTF, thinks the CDC is BS, but thinks RPMs and PSI are A-OK. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but get on, man. Get you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grant? That's right. Handball, Brian. Heroes don't do that. Mm. Uh, nice job, Lynch, with that uh, that opening. Work. Real good. Uh, all right, we got uh, Gina's been injured. We got that to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it was harrowing. I, uh, 15 day DL. Yeah. It was as harrowing as the conversation I had with Max Apata, who said uh, <laughs> Gina was injured. She cut her finger wide open. I go, mm. how? On a mandolin. Mm-hmm. I went, on a mandolin? Mandolin. Plucking, okay. okay. I, I didn't pronounce it a mandolin. <laughs> it's the same name. It's the same name. But, but, Adam, you have to consider the source if they're talking about me, what would be more likely? But consider me. Well, first off, I know you play the lute, <laughs> not the mandolin. <laughs> Come on, the Jews are right hard. there. Come yeah. yeah. What is the difference between a mandolin and a lute? I don't know. Some... I think mandolin's higher pitched. You're on your own. I, I can do the I can do the um, math between playing a ukulele right. and a mandolin, right. but I don't know about the lute. That I can't. The help lute you with. has 15 strings. It's bigger than the mandolin. Ah, okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. But still miniature, right? Oh, no. Small guitar? No. I think the body of the lute is small, but the neck is very long. Uh huh. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, Gina injured herself while strumming the mandolin. <laughs> while well, plucking. Now, the, you're right in that we I should have known you weren't playing a mandolin. Right. It's true, but Chris should have known. I don't know what the fuck a mandolin That's is. more true. Inside the kitchen. This is not a it's popular item in my world. Every human being who does anything with kitchens has sliced their finger on them or their hand on a mandolin how and long have these mandolins <laughs> been around it's, it's not the mandolin's fault although i'd love to blame the mandolin every mandolin comes with a guard to mm-hmm. prevent this yes. and nobody uses it so oh, it's you interesting. Use the guard oh brian mm. i don't have time in i'd the, rather uh, spend all night <laughs> urgent care in the uh yes in the circular saw realm the most used tool on any construction site is a. Uh, seven and a quarter inch hypoid saw, what they call a skill saw. They have a protective spring loaded Mm. sort of sheet that slides and goes, first thing everyone does when they get it is slide it up and pin it back and get it the fuck out of the way. Yeah, so that's what most people do. So it's mandolin a slicer? Yes, and Mm. it's funny because this specific mandolin was purchased for, my, my mom purchased it for my stepson because it is Foolproof. Now it'll always be foolproof for him because he. I just let him use it. It has a plunger, uh-huh. and I'm the one that feeds the food. Into Your mom it. purchased this for a five year old. Well, I from yes. It has like a uh, you know like grandma. A, let Jesus me, Christ. Let, let me explain. My fucking grandma got me <laughs> a me salad explain. shooter when I was nine. I bonked her over the fucking head. Let with me it. explain. Let me explain. This little guy thinks he's a chef. He loves cooking with me. It's how we bond. He he loves cooking. And so we're always looking for gadgets that he can use. And my mom said, look at this mandolin. It's foolproof. He does the plunger. Uh-huh. You feed the food in. Bob's your uncle. Well, that's great. But when I'm in charge of both, I don't have time for, to look for the guard. I know what I'm doing. And I was making tzatziki. And I wanted to get one more slice of cucumber than I should have. And a sieve opened up. Now, Mm. I did get a little queasy, didn't cry, didn't Mm. freak out, but did sort of slide down the counter and just kind of sit there for a minute with my hand over my head. It was, it was bloody. Were there stitches involved? No, because there was, the way I sliced it, there's nothing to stitch. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not like a cut where you can suture it it close. And there's no flap of skin that you can glue back on. But... I'm here to tell the tale. I survived. No problem. I I sat there on my floor for a while 
because Andy went on a run, of course he did, in the 113 degree heat. Mm. And I'm sitting there with my hand above my heart, which I thought you were supposed to do, and it wouldn't stop. So he gets the peroxide. Then we get into a fight about whether or not you should use hydrogen peroxide. You should not. Mm. I had that confirmed Why? because it also kills the good cells and it takes you longer to heal. Oh. Andy did not know that kills either. Kills white blood cells? <laughs> Apparently. So after a while, I'm sitting there. I got ice on it. It's not. It's not. It's not coagulating. Is that mm-hmm. the word? Yes. Yeah. And we said, Clawing. you know what? Let's. Yeah. Let's uh, hightail it over to urgent care. Go to the urgent care near my house. Everybody. I don't care how sick you are. There is nobody who is more disgusted than somebody coming in with like blood on a rag. Like mm-hmm. everyone just par- the seas part. Nobody wants to be near you. Mm -hmm. So I told them and they said, no problem. It's a two hour wait. I said, does it look like I have two hours? I'm bleeding out. So we went to another one that was wide open, went in and I was happy to say. You left that urgent care. Fuck yeah. I was going to sit there for two hours like an idiot. So I, we went to the next one. They checked me in. By the time I got there, she's like, well, it looks pretty bad. And I was like, just do what you got to yeah. do. And it finally stopped bleeding. Solder it. And the, well, the good news is she said, oh, once it stopped bleeding, she's like, it's not that bad and kind of shamed me. And mm-hmm. I said, I have never been so happy and so relieved to be shamed. Keep it coming. Let me know this is not a big deal. Don't <sighs> tell me I have to go to the emergency room. So she cleaned it up as best she could. She put this big bandage. I, I had to get a tetanus shot. Oh. I said, look, this is not an old rusty mandolin I found in the trash. This is a brand new... Uh, got the food shot. On it. Did she know what a mandolin was? <laughs> yes, because that is a very common reason people go to urgent mm. care. Oh, okay. I've also sliced my palm because that kind of mm. mandolin, you go like that. I know, oh. sorry. So anyway, um, it looks it looks comical because there's a giant bandage on it, but I think I'm going to live. I, she just said I need a little more. Look like how many warm. crimes you can get away with now. Yeah, oh, they're missing it. That's right. They make that yeah. the trigger That's finger. exactly right. I'm left-handed, but you know what? Like, like I tried to blame the fact that I was doing talk to text before the show on the fact that I couldn't use my finger. And Brian reminded me I use it all the time, and I use my thumbs to text. So I'm trying to get away with things. It's not working. I uh, so I have a philosophical question for uh, for you guys, okay. which sure. came up. I, I was telling you guys <laughs> the other day, eh, the other week, told you that uh, one of the Whittington brothers. Uh, Died in a plane crash. We're okay. talking about that. He was kind of a stunt pilot. Those are the kind crazy of guy. brothers. Those are the crazy brothers. Yeah. Race cars, went into jail and out yeah. of jail, and uh, one of them was piloting his plane and and died in it. And it was it was Bill who died. Yeah, so Bill Whittington, and uh, probably because he was an aggressive flyer, mm-hmm. like doing fun stuff stuff. in a plane and and i think maybe that's what happened i don't i don't know if it was a mechanical issue but i think it was him hot dog operator error right so i was uh out to dinner with uh chris morgan from fast and furious fame last uh last night we kept it to five hours Mm -hmm. so uh, we kept a short dinner And uh, I was telling him, oh, you know, Bill Whittington died and blah, blah, blah. And he's just one of these guys who's got to hop on his phone mm-hmm. all the time. And he said, oh, yeah, here's the story. Now, here's the philosophical question. He was flying a friend of his who was, a, I guess, a former pilot who had cancer, like terminal okay. cancer. And he said, let's, let's take you up one more time. Oh, like a make-a-wish thing. Yeah. Oh. Now, I don't know. Any of the details about the guy's terminal cancer or even if it was terminal. But the the point is, is if you were ravaged with cancer and you knew you were going to just sort of slowly decompose (laughs) for the next six months, would you rather go out in the Cessna? Doing what you love. Absolutely. I mean, that seems easy. If you have your affairs in order, I would say fucking YOLO. Well, literally. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, right. Unless you you'd like your family to sit there yeah. and cry over your body. I'm you know, transferring for... my trust to my my deed to my trust after this. But let's go up real quick. Wait, I don't mean <laughs> yeah. to Nancy Grace this, but are you implying that he had something to do with this problem? No. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying. Ed, I never heard the part about uh, taking his buddy up who had the had the cancer. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't? If it's if if flying was the thing you love the most, who wouldn't want to go out like that? Yeah. Um, well, also, you I mean, gotta you gotta think about your permanent record. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's like when somebody says 
25 years from now, how did your dad go? Or how did your grandpa right. go? And you go, prostate cancer. Everyone just kind of goes, well, yeah, that's ew, that sucks. That, that's rough. Yeah. But airplane crash sounds yeah. sounds a lot cooler. Badass. That's yeah. Really yeah. Sounds like you're living life on your terms. Yeah. You know? I think we're all in agreement. I've done some thinking about this, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, the, the dying of cancer part. And uh, yeah, it, it, the very end is the worst because you're obviously in the hospital or, or at hospice at home or whatever. So this guy was in an airplane. So clearly he wasn't at the very end. You know what right. I mean? So no. let's assume that he knew the end was coming. at some, you know, Let's take what his word and know it's terminal. Yeah, and this is all based on uh, me being drunk and Chris reading it from his phone. I'm so looking at Wikipedia, I, and the quote actually says it was terminally ill with cancer. So let's just take him at his word. All right. It's going to end no matter what. But, and yes. I, I don't mean to be morbid, but technically you're terminally ill with cancer, Brian. You're not going to go up and try How and... dare you? But isn't that what terminal means? No, it, it means the cancer will progress and kill you. That, I, just, that is, I thought terminal means incurable. Uh, inoperable is actually a different. Thing. Inoperable, but any, anyway, be that as it may, the, the 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 thing I've thought about is Gina. Remember the nice nurse telling your finger wasn't that bad? <laughs> yeah. How about this is how I you find out? let a little of that wash this over is, you as it, as it just, pertains to Brian's just tumor? Mean. Remember how good you felt? I did. I felt so relieved. And how and how <laughs> frightened you were when she said, "Oh my God, this is bad." Yeah. Remember that feeling? Yeah. Tell me again. Revisit that feeling. Yeah, how, okay. how my cancer can't, there's nothing to be done about I'm it. I want to get this I'm just saying that he didn't, he, it's not necessarily that he was on his deathbed. He could have been thriving as Brian is. Mm -hmm. so, but the end is near for both of us. <laughs> this is wrong. I, I think when you hear <laughs> terminal <laughs> cancer, I, I don't know, the over under six months uh, in, in my term. Uh, when you're writing an article saying a friend with terminal cancer, sure. I uh, think you're talking about some finish line yes. that's not mm. five years or ten years. Well, it's, thank you for educating me. <laughs> <laughs> so he had terminal cancer. He but took the, his friend up. Was his friend a pilot? Doesn't or say. did it say that? Maybe he was just... Oh, he was terminally, can terminally ill with cancer and lost his pilot's license. Oh, all so right. Died doing what he loved. Mm -hmm. Crashing yeah. planes. Yeah. All right, well, Bill. I, I thought about this and like the the very the, the thing I would hope to avoid if God forbid my cancer ever gets to that point is the end where I'm I'm wasting away in a hospital mm. bed and my, the last image my family and loved ones have of me has have of me is just this skeletal you know not response and mm. that's just horrible. Who wants that to be the last image as opposed to uh, bad news? Uh, your dad who was going to die anyway is dead now. A uh, fiery wreck would, doing what he loved. Yeah. Brian, would you like to get even with me? Yes. That is the last image of my father that I had and oh, I don't nice. recommend it to anybody. Not, see, that, that's horrible. I don't now. want Absolutely. to, you know, and I'm, now I'm thinking about this because my dad's really old now and I think we all, like I said, on the resume. That's right. Hey, Chris, uh, can you get a snowmobile yeah, yeah. and send it over to my dad's house? <laughs> So I feel like that that means you went on your own yeah. terms. In Southern California in July. Snowmobiling. Can you self immolate like a Tibetan monk? <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh So yes, given the choice. Given I think the we're choice. All on board, literally. Yeah, for sure. We're all we're all down with the plane. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no and and there's and there's no like practically there's no like what do you do with the body and yeah. remains, the blah blah blah. It's like fuck it. Guy is burned up Done. in a fiery wreck. All right. So we got uh We've we've agreed upon that. I like that. Yeah, I'm totally Across on board. board. Literally. Oh, good. Um, I, I don't no know. It was, it was kind of a hypothetical. I wasn't sure uh, how you yeah. guys would answer, but uh, we have the affirmative now. If the cancer is indeed terminal, yeah. Uh, Max Patty, you got things to put on this screen? Like, uh, didn't Gina find a commercial that we wanted to talk about? Yeah, for a product I've never heard of, and I'm curious if you've ever heard of it. Mm. A hairspray from the very early 80s, late 70s, called Mink. Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of Mink Oil. Oh, maybe that's what this is. Probably. There was a time... When mink oil was a thing, well, they get real into why how this is part of like this is mink oil. So here's how here's how shampoo. Here's the graph of shampoo throughout the decades. Tell me, please. First, it was it was always just shampoo. Right. Who gives a It'll shit? It'll get you clean. Then it started getting into male shampoo versus female mm -hmm. shampoo, oh, which sure. is the same shampoo with a different scent. Right. Then it started getting into different things like uh, body on tap. What? Oh, made with beer. But what? don't drink it. Are you serious? Oh, fuck yeah. So hoppy. 
And oh. you were shocked by the idea of a shower beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, they told you not to drink uh, it. That's true. Body L- on tap. Really? Listen, I, I, first off, I'm impressed by the notion of a shower beer. I respect a oh, shower yeah. beer. I was just surprised that that many people engaged in oh, the yeah. shower beer. But um, I, I like it. Shower whiskey, I prefer. Body on tap yeah, was... Never heard of it. Okay, so they started putting beer in shampoo. Get the fuck out. Then it went to... Very gluten. At some time. point... There was some hemp thing that okay, started taking sure, yes. into, into shampoo. Oh, wow. And then at some point, we started getting into mink oil. And then at some point, we got into the, the horse shampoo, yes, the mane, mane and, and tail, tail shampoo. Wow. And then we got into the Moroccan oil yes, thing. Yes, with the argon oil, <laughs> Moroccan oil. Yes. Nothing ever really hangs around that no. long because they're all the same. Yes. And not, no, there's the only difference is you pay more, but right. we, we get trendy. And herbal herbs. A lot herbal of herbs. essence, oh. herbs and flowers. Yeah, Body on Tap was probably oh, from shit. the late 70s. Oh, there it is. That's y- you know. Tap. Wait, for women too? All for women. Oh. It... it, it Oh, because you want to attract the men with the beer smell. <laughs> yeah. She'd, uh, <laughs> you know, Brian and I are both in this group, which is if you have a Jew fro or no fro, you don't get to do that move where you sniff your hair. You sniff your own I've hair. Once. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. But, As uh, it fell out and cascaded down my face. <laughs> all, <laughs> all these all these shampoo commercials of them sniffing their yeah. own hair. And they're all so shicks delicious. Always blonde, yeah. always Aryan. Body on tap, 1978. We'll play the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Beer, beer in the uh, okay. I don't know why beer. That's weird. It's a a thing you can only sell to women. That shit you wouldn't want spilled on your head is going to be good in your shampoo. Well, that's why I can't wait. If you try to sell bird shit, you know, shampoo to guys, like this thing, like you don't want someone to dump a beer on your head, then why would you want a smaller amount of it in your shampoo? Very good question. All right, sorry. Mm, clean. Mm, clean. I mean, really clean. And it holds any set I want. New beer enriched shampoo, Body on Tap, gives your hair super body, super hold. Brewed with one third real beer. Brewed! Wow. <laughs> but don't drink it. Just shampoo. Whether I roll it, pin it, curl it, or blow it dry, it gives my hair super body, super hold. And the shine of your life. It's the beer shampoo that does it in three bodybuilding formulas. That's body. On Tap. That's you think it's brewed. It, calling it, saying it's brewed, calling it body on tap, and saying it has a bodybuilding performance. You'd think it'd be for dudes. I don't. I've guys never... aren't that stupid. Okay. <laughs> about shampoo, most guys probably used a bar of soap. Like at that point, uh, up until so up until the uh, okay. mid eighties. Uh, I had a suspicion. Uh, this well, two suspicions. One, beer on tap, no longer around. Uh, but body on, uh, body, body, on, on body on tap beer shampoo. I almost no killed myself. Around. Yeah, sorry about that. No <laughs> around. However, my thought was this is a good time to have like beer infused shampoo because it's like craft IPAs mm-hmm. and like you know these thicker beers that like have kind of a woodsy scent or kind yeah, of yeah they a probably piney made scent. that shit with Schlitz or something yeah exactly yeah. and then I'm looking on Amazon and they have craft IPA shampoo they yeah. do they do mm. body on tap was Budweiser. Wow. They, they refused to be in any of the commercials. They're like, do not put us in any of your advertising. Uh, it's a third Budweiser, though. <gasps> and then uh, and then as soon as their interest or this, their disinterest grew, bought it, the guy, the guys that bought it were like, okay, we're pulling the plug. Budweiser doesn't want to be a part of this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so this was like get rich years. quick scheme. This they, they didn't believe in their product. Once Budweiser pulled out, they decided to dissolve the company. Yeah, Budweiser's like, look, we just want people to drink our beers. <laughs> Wow. Well, there's no other beer to use. <laughs> These the product hung around long enough for me to have my brain poisoned by the oh, commercial, God. and it's also was a time where they didn't really do commercials like you know now if you watch TLC they got these kind of commercials you watch Fox they got those kind of commercials you know they figure out who their demo demo is back then they just had commercials. (laughs) So you could just be watching McHale's Navy and then a body on tap commercial would come on. And it's like, who the fuck is watching? What beautiful blonde is watching McHale's Navy (laughs) on Channel 5 at four in the afternoon? But it's like, well, we have commercials. We just run them. That's weird. Well, I think that there's another commercial, this mink commercial that would fall right into that category. That was Kim Basinger in the commercial? Yeah, she was the uh, spokeswoman. That wasn't her. Put that back up. could have been her. No, it, it, like I'm seeing multiple sources saying she it was her. What? Pre-Alec Baldwin, Kim Basinger. Let's see. Mm, 
clean. Yeah. I mean, really clean. Yeah. And it holds any set I want. You That's an Oscar winner right there, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Gives your hair I mean, she's body, smoking hot, hot, but uh, yeah, it doesn't... Real beer. I don't wow. see it. But don't drink it. Just shampoo. Whether I roll it, mm, yeah, it I curl think... it, or blow it dry. It gives my hair super body, super hold. And Quiet. Shine of your life. It's <laughs> now I gotta go buy a town. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Whoa. Huh. I guess. Okay. I, I feel like I'm usually, and so are you, pretty good at like figuring those out. That doesn't look like her to me. I, 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 but I couldn't say it wasn't. I could just say it didn't strike me as her. Yeah. But that, weird. Okay. okay. Well, maybe it is. Huh. I mean, that's what the internet says, but who the hell knows? That could be one of those QAnon things. <laughs> true, true. Right? Yeah. 100% true. Yeah. Well, maybe she's in this commercial for mink hairspray, which I thought was bizarre until I saw Body on Tap, but check this out. What year? Uh, 81. 81. How does she do it? Not a hair out of place. The difference is me. That is How good hair. It? It's good hair. Her hair looks as soft and silky as her mink. Such a the difference is mink. Introducing Mink Difference. It's different from any other hairspray. It puts a silky hold on your hair because oh, it's enriched with coat. precious mink oil. Oh. Enriched with drop. mink oil. So your hair feels soft and silky that hair like mink. Move. But it really keeps you in style. Mm. Mm. Mink Difference. Pam Anderson not happy <laughs> about this fucking... You got a ring of mink? Yeah. yeah. You got to ring that oil out of that mink. Out of the, uh, probably the anal glands. And then the chick's just wearing the big mink Yep, to coat show, yes. To show you how silky mm-hmm. it is. Wow. Oh, it does... I will say this. It, it does make me long for a simpler time when models were just hot. Now it's a lot of tattoos and plus right. size and diversity. And you got to hear what they think about everything. Yeah, I just wanted, I just like the hotness right. part. Yeah. They just went, who's the fucking hottest <laughs> white chick we can find? We'll put her in our commercial. Yeah, that, those were salad days back Nobody then. Nobody needed to be represented other than hot oh. people. <laughs> Speaking of represented, I, uh, try and beat this. Everyone listening, tweet me. Is there an industry that has gone more woke, like that has taken a farther journey than the advertising industry from the days of Don Draper and Mad Men wow. and Budweiser, the bikini team, beer and tits and all that shit to, to like today? I'm not just saying even what you see on TV. That's one thing, like Subaru and love and all that. But like the people who make up the advertising industry, I know from you know listening to calls with Christie, they're very they're very progressive. You know what I mean? Very inclusive, very progressive. And I imagine in the Don Draper days, this was exactly the opposite. Well, there's studies, and I don't know if uh, Max Zapata can find them, but I heard a study maybe a few months ago uh, that if you say to a person, like especially someone in the demo mm-hmm. or the, the uh, sought after demo, like a young person, mm-hmm. and you say to them, the product's the same product, one company has taken a progressive stance on issues, mm-hmm. you know, voting rights mm-hmm. or the um, or uh, the environment or whatever. The other company is sort of neutral, and the other company is right. Like, they're more with the NRA and, and Trump. Uh, you get a much more favorable outcome to the progressive, right. we're down with the cause. It's, yep. it's, it's sort of, it's right there. The neutral... Folks are like, oh, it might be okay. The right folks are like, fuck that. We're never going to buy that chapstick mm-hmm. again. And the progressive environmental stance thing is like, oh, yeah, we're, we're down with that. We want to sure. be part of that. So obviously they understand that. Mm-hmm. And thus they're sort of fast paced. They're going fast in that right. direction because it's like if, if people are going to have an opinion of our company based on issues, then we're going to push that out right. there. In the past, it was like, who cares you you make corn dogs. Nobody gives yeah. a shit. You know, we don't need the uh, cereal box for for Tony the Tiger to have the gay flag on it to represent Pride Month. Yeah, a like, nickel who, for every box of Golden Smacks. Right. Who who gives a fuck? Right. They were worried about putting like decoder rings and shit right. in in there. But that's that's where we are. So it would utterly make sense that if you were simply in the business of selling cereal or shampoo or cars or anything, and that was a big factor, you'd go fucking hard yeah. that direction. And I think that's I think that's where we're at. Tell me if I'm right or wrong about this, because this is a little before my time, but you know how we're, how culture and how advertising is obsessed with, like, 
teenagers and mm-hmm. that's the music and that's who everyone caters to. When I think of like the Don Draper days and even like the Brady Bunch days, it was still all about like, you know, what does mom need to stay home and take care of the house? What does dad need to go out to work? And what do the little kids need? Like, you know, the kitty carry all like baby toys. I can't think of any commercials that anyone gave a shit about teenagers f- until now. Mm. Am I am I wrong about that? I can't no, think of anything. Yeah, you're right. About you're teenagers. right. It was all it was all kids and then cars skip, and, and then, then adults. Skip and yeah. you get to to adults. Study is from uh, February 2020. Do you oh. have it there? Well, I was paraphrasing, but it seems seems like I got the gist of it. Do you have it, Max Spanna? Yeah. So it was just like you said. Like you take a uh, you, the study says you take a company and it's it's all neutral, but then they um, but participants were told the company had conservative values. They viewed the company in a significantly worse light. So this is a this is Harvard Harvard Business Review. Um, and the company's Jones Corp. So their opinion of Jones dropped to 33 percent. The company was n- the company was not only seen as less committed to social responsibility in its community, but also as less profitable. Participants were 25.9 percent less likely to buy its product and 25.3 percent more likely to buy from a competitor. In addition, job seekers were 43.9 percent less likely to apply for position there. Because conservative activity was viewed so poorly, the reverse seemed likely for liberal activity, but that wasn't the case. Participants who were told the company had liberal values viewed it as neither good nor bad. There was no significant change in any opinions or intended behaviors. Oh, so they kind of punished the conservative companies and the liberal ones that were just zero. kind of neutral yeah. on. Yeah. I, ca- I guess because that's just kind of considered the norm now, no. I'm, I'm assuming. It, it doesn't. You're right. It's not taking a stand to be part of the progressive yeah. movement. All right, uh, let me tell you about uh, Tommy John. There's where you should take a stand this summer. Soak up the sun, but not your sweat. Tommy John cool cotton fabric is two to three times cooler than regular cotton. Get a pair of new Tommy John underwear and let your buns breathe, man. It is, I'm wearing mine now. I always wear my Tommy Johns, especially during the summer, especially when you, you get a little lather going. Uh, they'll dry on you fast. You go out, take a jog, work out a little, get a little little sweat going. The, you can just walk back to the house and you'll dry on off. Uh, they got moisture wicking fabric. It's four times the stretch competing brands. And once you t- try Tommy John underwear, you are never going back. I, I promise you that. They do not have customers. They have fanatics. It's the best pair you'll ever wear or it's free. Guarantee, right, Dawson? Right now, get 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. Go to TommyJohn.com slash Adam for 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. Well, we got trending topics with Max Zapata in studio, and we'll do that right after this. Now, a life tip from Sensei Adam. So, you're worried about home security. Here's a tip from the sensei. Hang a Confederate flag that can be seen from the street. Sure, the neighbors may think you're a racist, but the criminals will know you have a gun. Hajime. This has been a life tip from Sensei Adam. All right. (laughs) Thanks to uh, maybe Giovanni for digging up that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I have no recollection of any of that. And true. Well, the whole thing about any Sensei Adam thing is uh, whether it's uh, you know two diaries or the Confederate flag, mm-hmm. it's it's got to got to be true. Yeah, it's, it's got to mean you're not going to do it, but it still has to you be could. true. Yeah, that's right. All right, uh, Anderson the Spider Silva, by the way, is a UFC legend. We've had a lot of UFC legends, Good and back. he. He's going to be fighting uh, Cesar Chavez, oh, junior, yeah. right? And then Senior Chavez, senior, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez is going to be fighting Hector Camacho, junior? Oh, yeah. I forgot about wow. that. It's a co-main event. Uh, wow. Um, so so Cesar, uh, um, Julio Cesar Chavez was a guy who was like 90 and 0 before he got beat, like literally Maybe made it to eighty nine, wow. you know, or who, something. Who was the guy that took him down? Geez, I don't know. I hope it was Camacho Senior. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be awesome, Hector Macho Camacho. 
But um, he's fighting Camacho's son. Wow. And then he's given away not as many years as you'd think. I don't know. Kalen can look it up or something. But Julio Cesar Chavez, you'd think would be 25 years older, but he's... I don't know. I was looking into it. He's like 18 or 19 years old or You're something. You're saying Hector Camacho had a kid when he was young? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and 20 years is not nothing, I would imagine. No, it, it, it is not nothing. And then Julio Cesar Chavez's son is fighting the older Anderson Silver in a boxing match. Wow. So not a mixed martial arts. Anyway, uh, interesting uh, interesting story. So uh, what do we got, uh, Max Pata? An intro. Adam, obviously no NFL right now, but are you watching any of the playoff basketball or hockey? I watch it through the eyes of my beloved 15-year-old son who comes in and gives me updates every 10 seconds. Yeah, he's, he's really in it. A, it's a weird playoff season in the NBA right now. A lot of injuries. I Wait, mean, who died? Who was the seven foot four guy who died uh, three weeks oh, ago? Oh, shoot. Um, Mark something. Mark... Eaton. Eaton, yeah. Mark Eaton died? Oh, yeah. yeah. Seven foot, foot four guy from the 80s. My son came in crestfallen. Oh, God. Did you hear about that, Mark yeah. Eaton? Big, goofy white center for the Jazz. Wow. So yeah. Mark Eaton died. So I'll be in my room. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the fuck do you even know Mark, wow. Mark Eaton is? Tough day for him. It was him. a tough day. We all remember where we were. Oh, no. Don't tell about Rick Smiths. <laughs> yeah. So Sunday's pretty broken up about Mark Eaton dying. Yeah. I think it was 64. When debt left shrimp goes, it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, anyway, a lot, lot of uh, injuries right now happening in the playoffs. Uh, just announced today, James. I mean, uh, Ka- uh, Kawhi Leonard out with a clipper interfering an ACL in- Ooh, injury. Oh, that's a big deal. Yeah, and uh, and obviously Kyrie's out with an ankle injury. James Harden played last night when he shouldn't have. He has a hamstring injury. and uh, But Chris Paul... Uh, announced today too that he is under COVID protocol, mm. and oh. he just they just won. And like he, I mean, the, he played out of his mind in the last game. Um, a lot of and it's weird because like a lot of people in the NBA, a lot of the players are getting asked, "Do you have your vaccine? Are you vaccinated?" Nobody's saying. I've anything. been here about this. The, Sam Darnold got into some trouble for not trouble, but you know, controversy for uh, I haven't gotten the shot. Don't know if I'm going to get it. Don't know if I'm going to get it. Yeah. So it, right now they're not being forced or anything to take the vaccine, and they're not saying whether they have it or not. LeBron. Same with LeBron. LeBron gotten a little shit about this, right? Yeah. Well, uh, well, Chris Paul. He so after Game Four. He went up into the stands and hugged his parents, no. mm-hmm. and uh, everyone kind of are now freaking out like that's how he got it because mm-hmm. because uh, he they obviously oh. won the series and he wanted to hug his family and and uh, and be congratulated and things like that. So, uh, so he, he tested positive. He tested positive, and and he could be out for the series. So. <sighs> I'm missing God. something. Why shouldn't he just get vaccinated well, that's then? The, that's okay. what I don't understand. What's Here's the, the big question deal? for every one of these athletes who's being dodgy or not getting the vaccine. Now, you, you, everyone listening, you can get it or you can not get it. It's up to you. However, if you're Sam Darnold or Kyrie or whoever, uh, Chris Paul, the question should be, hey, Mark Eaton. Yeah, Mark Eaton. <laughs> the question from the reporter should be, hey, um, do you think you're an important part of this team? Mm. Obviously, the question will be, the intro should be yes. Uh, what do you say to your teammates when you test positive for COVID? And you're out for how long? Fucking play. Playoff series. Yeah. yeah. So is it a That's two- outrageous. <laughs> is it a two week protocol? Uh or it's, it's a quarantine it, or something? Yeah, it's unclear. I mean, and everyone's, you know, obviously going to like, well, LeBron went out and now and uh, and he he got to still play because uh, but you know, he's under it's under safety protocol right now. And it's uh yeah, so it's interesting. But the reason I'm bringing up the Suns is because Suns in four, 
those three words was in the number one trending topic on Saturday. Okay. So what happened was a Suns fan, his name is Nick, he was at Game 3 of the Western Conference semifinal series, um, and that was in Denver, but he's a Suns fan. He's wearing Suns gear, and uh, and he said, you know, I was out there, I was making a ton of friends, everyone's having a good time, which, I mean, you see, like, if, if you see a person in the in the stands who are wearing the opposing team's jersey, it's just lighthearted yeah. music. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, good-natured ribbing. Yeah, yeah like good-natured ribbing. Like a Giants fan in the parking lot yeah, of Dodger you know, Stadium, that you know? Don't know? <laughs> brain damage. Not that guy. I know, I shouldn't have looked at Brian. When I, when Brian I said that. Stowe. Right, that's right. Yeah, but there are who, by the way, pitched the first pitch uh, of the yeah, season, right? Didn't really. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so there, this the Suns in four went around because if you watch this video, there were two Nuggets fans that uh, that came across Nick, and they were they were mouthing off at each other, and this video went insanely viral over the weekend. We could watch some of it. So the two Suns fans in the back, I mean uh, Denver fans. Oh, just punches. goes for the punch. Strong punches. So, so the Suns fan, Nick, oh, grabs him by the jersey. Oh, wow. Now watch this. Oh. Haymaker. That Suns fan's got some a wingspan. He's got some, he's got some range. Solar flares. Yeah. Throwing he, uppercuts. Suns in four. <laughs> so now, and then he ends the fight with just going, Suns in four. Suns in four. So this really was just about that? Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. So everyone just freaking out. Like you end the fight. By just looking at the guys and just going, sons in four, sons in four. Uh, well, we can ask Anderson Silva about it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That, that, and it doesn't form. bode well for you when you're fighting one guy and, like, arguing with the other guy. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't bode well for the guy who you're beating yeah, up because no. you're having a conversation. Yeah. Resting heart rate. It's like yeah. beating someone up and not having to put down your sandwich. Mm-hmm. It's not good. Yeah. yeah it's, Especially it's a, it's when a poor referendum on yeah. your skills. the other guy threw the first punch, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and he, was telling the, he was telling his friend, like, I'm going to fuck your boy up. That's what he was saying. And then, and then he said, "Sons and four. So he ended with that. And uh, and the two guys, they posted a selfie video of them later, which like people screen grabbed. Were like, yeah, dude, we messed that dude up. We just got in a fight. We messed him up. But this video is the one that got viral. Uh, that went viral. So it's very obvious. I've been to many USC away games, many USC away games, worn my, of course, USC colors. Never had an incident. I'm not a mouthy guy, as you can mm. imagine, more passive aggressive. Uh, but uh, on the way out of the USC Virginia Tech game in Washington, D.C. in 2005. Uh, a bowl a, uh, game? Uh, no. Opening opening game of the season is a non conference uh, opening game of the season. In no, 2004. Wait, where was the game? In DC. Oh, it's in DC. At our RFK okay. Stadium. Wow. Yeah, it's for oh, FedEx Field. Whatever. Right. Uh, it was pretty sweet. Uh, USC won. So you're wearing your OJ jersey. I'm wearing mm-hmm. my uh, Carson Palmer jersey. Yeah. I dare you. And uh, a, a truck, f- truck, huh? pickup truck full of uh, Virginia, Virginia Tech fans slows down as I'm walking out of the stadium, says to me and my friends, hey, hope your plane crashes. And oh. they, they drive away. Oh I my. respect that. Lighthearted ribbing. That's, that's yeah, it's all in fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Devin Booker, he's like the franchise player in the Sun, the, the shooting guard there. So mm-hmm. he, after the Suns did complete their sweep <laughs> of the Nuggets on Sunday night, he sends out this tweet where it's just, <laughs> need this man's info. Because <laughs> 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 this, this video went viral. It's a Suns, Suns and Four guy. So Nick actually messages Devin Booker on Instagram, just goes, hey, Book, not sure if you saw the viral video from last night, because this is an older message before the tweet. He says, but I just want to say sorry. I hate to make us fans look like heathens. I was just acting on self-defense. Self-defense. Sentiment hasn't changed. Hashtag Sons and Four. And he changed his Instagram name to Sons and Four. And I mean, look, yeah, so look, I mean, we've been hearing about about all the shitty fans uh, now that when when the stadiums, I mean, the arenas have been reopening and what they've been doing with the players. And now, look, they're making friends now. This is nice. What's the uh, is this guy going to jail or what do we got? No. no, Wow. Yeah. He, he, he was actually uh, just on a, a Barstool podcast saying, I think uh, me and Devin Booker are going to do some collaborating. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, well, yeah, get some merch. <clears throat> the, so as far as the law goes, he, he was assaulted by this guy. But at a certain point after your, you four, after your 14th yeah. uppercut, <laughs> you, there's got to be some point it's going to swing back yeah. to you, right? Yeah. We're, but, you're, you're on the offense now. We're just not. 
So that's that. The other guy threw a few punches. You threw a few punches. Yeah. And the Lamar other guy's nose was, was bleeding, of... and like some uh, another guy in the stands just took the two guys who got beat up, and just like, look, your nose is broken. Cops are coming. Just get out of here. Just go. And wow. they just ran. They, they, they ran out. Well, you know what I bet you like about this, Adam? Hmm. This reminds me, even though it's this is a sort of a sad referendum on you know plane passengers and stadium you know crowd whatever, but it has a vibe of that old school um, uh, you know be proud of your school mm-hmm. you know like if this was two opposing high schools over a football game that would be charming. I'll tell you what makes me happy as a former boxing coach: the uppercut was never a punch utilized by amateurs, mm. MMA guys, and guys fighting in arenas. Why? The uppercut was always kind of a, a well, uh, well, maybe we'll just put it to you this way. Um, if you see girls fight, you'll never see an uppercut. You always see this kind of wide mm-hmm. flail. I'll have that it's for kind you of a, news. Kind of a, kind of a head hunting. Right. You don't see the uh, you don't see them use their left arm. They mm-hmm. just use their right arm, and it's just, if you think about all these kind of girls fighting in the streets, this crazy wide mm-hmm, sort of mm-hmm. right hand haymakers and stuff. And and maybe we'll talk to Anderson about this, but in the early days of the UFC, these guys were a lot of karate guys and and college wrestlers and football players and shit like that. You didn't see guys throwing uppercuts. You saw guys just throwing this kind of wide, wild. Because it wasn't wild, part of their training. Yeah, it's like it's a little more of an advanced punch. And so it's like when you see the amateur, you know, when he sees celebrity boxing and Danny Bonaducci's going to fight Screech or whatever, you don't see the uppercut. Right. Now, Rest in peace. Amongst, the, amongst the pros, you'll see the uppercut, right. the, the real boxers. And, and you'll see the guys who are in the lighter weight divisions, throw uppercuts. Like Mike Tyson is one of the heavyweight guys that threw uppercuts. He was super effective I with only it. know that because the video game Knockout. But you didn't see even the big dudes throwing tons because it was more of a technical, mm. it was sort of like gymnastics, you know, smaller, more, more technical stuff. Um, you now see plenty of uppercuts in the UFC. So I've always said when you start seeing a lot of uppercuts in the UFC, that'll be the signal that these guys are getting skilled mm. with their hands. That's a boxing thing. That means there's a generation of guys who've been working their boxing mm. versus transitioning from college right. wrestling. You know what I mean? And the fact that it's spilled into the arenas <laughs> and the drunk white guys yeah. are throwing multiple yeah. uppercuts. We've arrived. We've arrived. Yes. Good form. The Good singularity. Form. Yeah. That's right. I mean, as a as a player of the video game Mortal Kombat, I've always appreciated yeah. the uppercut myself. Mm. But speaking of fighting, um, uh, over the weekend too, there was a there was a big fight, social gloves battle of the platforms. It was the YouTube versus TikTokers fight that we we talked about a few times. Uh, it was at Miami's Hard Rock Stadium, very successful event, over three point five billion total impressions. But uh, I don't want to talk about the fight. I want to talk about one of the performers, and that's DJ Khaled. Oh, so yeah. so um, a lot of people... Strap yeah. in. I'd rather see him fight. Yeah, that'd well, be great. Well, here, let's just watch him getting in the ring. Let's just see how he does. He, he's <laughs> getting gonna, into the ring. He's going he's gonna to hype up the crowd here. Hey! Yeah. All I do is win, win! Come on, you man! In every time Everybody, it's we the best. We the best. It's a fairly Rock empty Taylor. arena. Yeah, social distanced. Oh, telling everyone to get up. Yeah, a he's lot of green. a lot of a lot of call and response. People are just kind of confused. Like we don't know the words, man. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Enjoy. That's it. it? We will now. Take a million dollars. <laughs> well, no, there's. He did something else. You can't. Why don't you play the other clip of what else he did oh for God. his performance? The floor sweat, but I'm gonna try another one. So he just dances to Santana. Wow. He can't sing a rap, but boy, can he not move? <laughs> another one. Got the little shuffle. Nobody's really paying attention. Yeah. So. A uh, very <laughs> underwhelming uh, performance. Everyone's been tweeting about how, yeah, it was just it was just weird to watch online. And the people that were there said it was weird too. I mean, look, I don't. Maybe he expected the huge packed arena, shoulder to shoulder. But mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you got to read the room. Don't do the call and response if there's not if there's nobody that's going to respond. 
Yeah, but it's it's also, you know, if you can't sing and you can't play an instrument, you can't really do anything, be careful about pushing yourself out there. Yeah. You'll definitely get exposed. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Easily. And he's kind of getting exposed. Do you, um, I don't know if this is the newest song, but I think, I think his newest song, guess what he samples, and I cannot believe this person signed off on it. Mm. Layla. Oh, really? It opens with Derek and the Layla. Dominoes? I like the... <laughs> No, yeah, Derek, it's not Eric Clapton. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah no, it's, no, no, no. can you believe that the estate then of Derek and the Dominoes signed off on that? It's, yeah. Well, that's yeah. the band's name. That's interesting, too, yeah. because it's a little, bit, a little bit, maybe a little bit more complicated. That's Dwayne Allman oh. playing that lick. Follow oh, it money. is. So, yeah. interesting. Not great. All right. Well, anyway. DJ. I don't know. I, at some point, <laughs> I'd like to say I was all wrong about DJ Khaled from mm. uh, years ago, but yeah. I, 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 I did not think mm. that. Yeah. I, I probably Take had... Probably had some initial thoughts about Lady Gaga very mm-hmm. early on, and I've mm-hmm. changed my tune. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, not DJ Khaled. Yeah. yeah, Lady Gaga's awesome. All right, uh, one more sports story here. Uh, Brian, you're a Warriors fan. I'm sure you've seen Clay Thompson whenever he goes up to uh, do a press conference and there's a Gatorade bottle there. He just oh. he just knocks it off. It's a pretty... <laughs> It's a pretty uh, famous thing that that he does um, be, because he's not sponsored by yeah, Gary. He's, he's actually sponsored by Body pal- Armor. Oh, okay, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Cristiano Ronaldo did something very is, similar. Is everyone everyone makes a sports drink now, right? Uh, I, like Goodyear's going to make a sports <laughs> they, drink they soon, right? Finally, with vulcanized rubber. But the thing is, yeah, these sports drinks sponsor the league, so like they sponsor Gatorade sponsors the oh, NBA. So it's right. kind of funny that Clay will just that's knock like, it down. You remember uh, the Dream Team, the original Dream Team? They had the mm-hmm. they had the Reebok logo on the on the warmups, but a lot of those guys had Nike contracts, Jordan and you know Magic Johnson, whoever. So that instead they weren't allowed to not wear the uh, you know to the medal ceremony. They uh, compromised. You can show a picture of the middle medal ceremony wearing a uh, American flag as a sash. Oh really? Mm-hmm. If you look, half the guys are wearing. Yeah, American I remember. Flags. I do remember hearing that story. Yeah. Well, uh, at the Euro 2020 news conference, Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, there was two bottles of Coca Cola on the table. And uh, and this is what he did. Is he a Pepsi guy? Is he RC Cola? <laughs> well, he'll he'll actually explain what what guy what kind of guy he is. So he sits down. What if he does a hard back, stance about on getting sugar? Reaches for the Coke bottles. Slides them off camera. And then he's sitting there, grabs, and he says, "Agua." Good. Mm-hmm. Good, yeah. for him. Good for him. Good for him. And uh, and everyone's talking about that. Yeah. Okay, you don't want these sugary drinks. Vinny well, is was probably... Was that vitamin water or was that like water, water? No, it's just water. Good. He just says, drink water. And uh, since that moment, oh, as Kim, of today... Kimmel's got to be pissed. <laughs> Kimmel loves... Hey, he spit Pepsi in my face. That's <laughs> right. You want to get hot. Yeah. In my face. He's a co- I think between Coke and Pepsi, it's like whatever your family is, right? Because I'm a what Coke guy. Yeah, yeah, what you grew up with. Yeah, what you grew up with. maybe? I mean, uh, Jimmy thinks that Pepsi ripped off Coke and so he doesn't like that they ripped them off. I grew up Poor with that Coke. kind of sentiment, too. I was more of a Shasta yeah. dude. <laughs> I was even a step... There's even a step lower. You know what I mean? Shasta. Oh, Shasta yeah. RC. Yeah, Diet Shasta, right. is, what they, Shasta is what they... Shasta's what they have at the Alpha Beta in North Hollywood, and they could do Shasta, like cream soda mm-hmm. and Shasta. Cola. Cola. Everything we... If There wasn't much, but when my... My mom was kind of a health food nut... But my dad didn't give a shit. And then when they became, when he became a bachelor, imagine my dad cooking or or doing anything, I guess would be the question. But my dad was a bachelor at that point, bought this little broken down house in deep North Hollywood, had an apartment first. And my dad was now in charge of, you know, going to the market, buying Mm -hmm. the stuff. And my dad just had the worst, he, he just couldn't, he couldn't cook. We had like... The frying pan with the handle busted oh, off. You know, I'd use your shirt, you know, as a potholder. Mm-mm. And uh, my dad would make, he'd buy these like $3 steaks and just fry them in the pan. Like he, he didn't smoke them or sear them or, just, or barbecue. My dad's never barbecued a day. So he'd just drop them in the pan and like flip them over twice. They were like horse meat. He'd also do uh, like generic spaghetti and then he'd strain it. And then he'd throw it back in the pot, and then he'd dump ragu yeah, sure. right into the pot, of just like stir, stir, it up. stir it up. That was one of him with a can of corn. That was like, wow. that was the vegetable. He never cooked a vegetable. He never cooked a fucking thing, but we would get Shasta on occasion and the uh, generic 
chocolate chip ice cream. I think whatever the cheapest of whatever that shit was wow. all the time. But, yeah. ugh. I, gr- I grew up uh, adoring my grandmother's spaghetti. And it was the same thing, just a spaghetti with a ragu dumped in. And I thought, okay, it's that easy. But then one time I I walked in on my grandma, and she was pouring half a box of brown sugar into the, uh, the uh, sauce as well. Wow. As if the sauce didn't have enough sugar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The jarred spaghetti is like, so like that's nine why grams it. per mm-hmm. half cup. That's and why I love and it. the occasional, in in lieu of ricotta cheese, cottage cheese just oh! on the side of the side of the bad. dish. That's pretty nasty. Mm, it's like, yeah, you can't. That's like cheese. Cousin. Cottage cheese is not a substitute. For cottage ricotta. cheese, corn, and spaghetti. He should have been on trial for neglect at that point. Yeah, I don't know if the oh. statute's limitations <laughs> are run out, but. I'll tell them when I get them on that snowmobile what's that's going on. fucking vulgar. Ugh. It's like I, re- I my dad is wildly incompetent in, in every endeavor, but cooking is his worst because <laughs> cooking involves three things. Like, first, you have to have a will to eat. You, you know what I mean? My yeah. dad, again, my dad for dinner would have cottage cheese with raisins. That's you know, that guy's so idea gross. for dinner. Like he never like, I'm in the mood for Korean barbecue right. or no. something. Or, I'm, I'm, we're, or we're gonna go out and fire up the grill. Or, There's no, he was never in the mood for any, he, he literally just whatever. Just eat some saltines and some and an apple slice or something like that's what he would eat for dinner. So he has no will to cook because right. he, he doesn't want care. he doesn't care. He's not going to eat it himself or he will, but he doesn't have any taste buds. Then there's money. He has zero money, so everything's going to be the shittiest of the shittiest, and you're never going to eat out. And then you would have to actually be have some empathy for the person you're cooking for. <laughs> like, well, maybe this 10-year-old right. doesn't want this fucking lukewarm ragu <laughs> that stirred up in this pot with no handle. It's like, yeah, but I don't care about that either. So once you check those three boxes, trick. you are fucked if you have to <laughs> eat. Oh and I never had a penny, and he never had a penny. So there was no, like, screw this, I'm going in and out. Like, there's none of that. You just fucking sat there and sucked it up. Ugh. That's that's disgusting. I just imagine my dad cooking. Does he you know, only eats stuff that hospitals serve, like cottage cheese and raisins and crackers. Uh, it's just, it, it's never, he, he's never said, I'm in the mood for uh, fill in the blank, like yeah. tacos it's, or anything or burgers. I was worried about that when I think of like old paisans like your dad, you know, we talked about yesterday, like, you know, these are mooks who don't have like any right. h- horrifying taste, but they love good food and spaghetti and tomatoes are cheap. Like you can make yeah, spaghetti and tomato sauce and spices really easily. I think it kind of reflects an overall sort of zest for life, a joie de vie. Uh-huh. You know, like you are, again, cooking is it's kind of symbolic. It's sure, not like, of course. I like the way food tastes. There's a, <laughs> a I, ritual. I like doing things for yeah, people. Like I want to nurture family. people. Yes. So there's a symbolic part. And then there's another part, which is uh, more individual or internalized, which is like, I would like to have this quality for my, for my life right. or this experience. Right. I want to go out and experience this. I want to do this stuff. I want to, I want to, it's, it's, it's sort of a metaphor when you go, Oh, we're going to try this new restaurant. It's not really about the food per se. It's about the experience. Right. Like I want to go out and have this experience. Have this and so like the people, you know, who probably eat the best, also travel the most, mm-hmm. also hike the most, or experience right. you know the most. Chris and I are going to Napa next weekend. Yeah, that sounds about right. They are, yeah, right? They are. There you go. <laughs> That's you. Get some spaghetti. Right. You know what I just realized, though? <laughs> How dare you? Your dad, between cottage cheese, raisins, and noodles, if he would have just gone one step further, he was so close to making kugel, which is delicious. Have you had kugel? Yes. It's yes. Based, it's a Jewish, Jewish they dessert. call it a noodle pudding, but it's yeah. it's a it's a side dish. It, I know it sounds gross, but it's basically like um <laughs> egg noodles with uh like cream and cottage cheese and raisins and then like a topping of like cornflakes and it's actually gross, Dad. It's actually a, fantastic. There was a um I don't know if they used the cornflakes in ancient times. <laughs> yeah. But Amaranth flakes. There was a Kugel dessert, like a pre-packaged Kugel oh, dessert sure. at some point. It can it wasn't, be very sweet if you want to make like it that way. It wasn't like this, but there was something called Kugel that I'm thinking back about my body on tap shampoo commercial. <laughs> wow. But my dad also did 
the chub pack burger. Get the chub pack meat, you know, and mm-hmm. just mash it into a ball and just like mash it down right sure. right in the pan. I mean, again, there's never like any onion mix in there mm-hmm. or yeah, seasoning about or the shape. anything. It was just mash it into the pan and then you put some ketchup and some cottage cheese on the side. <laughs> and that was his, vulgar. That was his move, man. Oh. The saddest part of this whole milieu is the, um, the uh, pot without a handle. Mm-hmm. It's like, did the Goodwill not exist? Could you not have gotten a pot for a dollar? You know, this was during a time. Yes, you're right. You, you could have. First off, people hung on to shit forever. Like, the pot still works. It holds canned corn. I would argue it like, doesn't work. <laughs> well, it, it'll the, the corn won't spill into the burner. Yeah, okay. it'll, it'll be there. You just have to get a dish rag it's, to get it off, <laughs> off of the thing. So shit was ridden into the ground. I mean, that uh, sofas. Yeah. Do you know, I've owned 700 sofas in my life. My parents own one, and that <laughs> yeah. was their dad's. You know what I mean? Like, you got a sofa. Yeah. Someone bequeathed you the sofa. That That's was your, your sofa. sofa. There was no fucking, I'm going to Ikea. I'm going on a run. Right. My, my dad has never bought a new pot or a pan or glasses. It was Trump never, it. never anything. Yeah. It was just what you had. That's what you had. That's maybe, how it works. Maybe I'm having a pre-senior moment right now, but I, for some reason it, it escapes me. When your dad was taking care of you and you were still at that age. Taking care of you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when, he, when you were his ward, uh, what was he doing for money? He worked at Five Acres, which was an orphanage. What? Mm-hmm. Still there. In Altadena. Really? Are you serious? Yeah. I don't think we've ever heard that before. He was yeah. working at an orphan. So he's probably nicer to those kids than you. Know, yeah, he was friendly enough <laughs> to me, like a, like a roommate. Wait, what was he doing at an orphan? There were still orphanages. Uh, they didn't call them. Come to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up next week. They didn't call them orphanages, or they don't, or yeah, but it's an orphanage. It's still there. I didn't know that. It's an Altadena. It's wow. called a group home now. Yeah, probably. it's like a group. Yeah. It's like a group home. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now I think your dad's a saint. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's a, he wasn't a bad guy. He just didn't know how to make money right. or do anything for right. anybody. Right. But he, he like he had to work at some point. It's a child care agency. Yeah, it's still there. Wow. wow. Yeah, I think he was there for, for like a decade. What did he do there? Counseling? He was an uh, an educator. Like he was in, he was the director of education. Although wow. th- that's kind of a lofty title, which is <laughs> very lofty. The the kids, some of the kids went off the campus, off the five acres to go to school. Uh-huh. The other kids were considered flight risks or something. Are really not, they had so many issues okay. that yeah. they couldn't be put yeah. into a classroom. Right. So they had to kind of figure out which ones stayed here and got taught and which ones were able to get bussed into the local mm-hmm. public school and get taught. But there were all oh. kids without parents. Some were taken away from their family. I mean, these are really troubled So he taught the flight kids. risk kids. He was just sort of... He was it, a goalie. He was sort of in charge of like, wh- I, I don't know exactly, but like which ones left, which ones stayed, you know, who the teachers this were. This is fascinating that, to me. That kind of thing. Wow. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So it wasn't like, oh, come come to work with me and make some friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, although I did go there once and... Uh, they have their little cabins with like their den parents and stuff, and like the den parents like slept in the middle, and then there'd be the cabin of kids it's on the one side, and yeah. cabin of kids on the other side, you know, and they'd have their lunch, and oh, it's a whole thing, I, man. I had no idea. Oh my god, yeah, it's not that far from here. Wow. The uh, Kugel is. Uh, you got a picture of it? It's a yeah. It was commercial. Oh, oh, it's a Kugel. I don't commercial. think it's the same Kugel. <laughs> No, but it, that's what they... That's the name that you Google that's, what they, that's what they called it. Huh. <laughs> Kugel. <laughs> Crazy eye Kugel. Here comes Kugel, the crab peanut is a surprise. This is Kugel peanut spread from Kraft. It not only tastes like peanuts, it comes in flavors. And chocolate, vanilla, banana, and cinnamon. Kugel spread. Who is this woman? Is she okay? And it's delicious on bread. It's Kim Basinger's sister. And, <laughs> and it doesn't make my mouth stick together. And it doesn't make my mouth stick together. You love Kugel, the crap peanut is the bride. Never heard of this. But it's not peanut, it's peanut-like. Peanut. Yeah, God knows. Vinny would never stop throwing up. Is wow. Anderson uh, on the blower yet? I don't want to... No, we're going to go to news next. Oh, oh, yeah. sorry. sorry but before, we, before we go to news, i got to yeah. mention one thing about that, that Ronaldo video. 
as of this morning. So that was yesterday. Coca-Cola woke up this morning, saw a 1.6% drop. <laughs> So they, about a $4 billion <laughs> drop in their market share <laughs> wow. because, beca- because of that moment. Well, you know what? Good for him because you know how like the like McDonald's sponsors the Olympic Village and stuff? Like right. good for this guy for being like, no, drink water. Yeah. Uh, every, almost every human being I ever talked to about losing weight, they just say two things. Stop drinking cola, started walking more. Mm-hmm. Brian. But Brian's, Brian's thing, that's, that's everyone's thing. Just put down the fucking mm-hmm. soda. I mean, imagine the people that are trying to lose weight and drinking four or five Cokes a day. Like, right. it's impossible. I well, yeah. I, was just, I haven't had a Coke or a soda since 2002. Wow. Yeah. Know, 20 years. Well, that's the thing. I I never liked Coke because we didn't grow up with that kind of thing, you know, because diet, right, was in our family. But even a <sighs> diet Coke, and I know Vinny says your liver can't tell the difference anyway, but for me, psychologically, when I drink a diet Coke, then I want the food that I, I'm not supposed to have. Like, if I want uh, a diet Coke, I got to have Doritos. Slow. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the, Stepping I, stones. Slippery exactly. Coke. It's why it's always <laughs> ice water. All right. Let me tell you about uh, credit karma, credit karma money, checking account where you can win daily instant karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. Um, just pay with your debit card if you win. You'll be notified on the spot and your instant karma cash will be added back to your spend account. Credit Karma Money has already given away over $3 million to over 50,000 members. Open an FDIC insured account for free. No minimum balance required, no overdraft fees, and free withdrawals at 50,000 plus ATMs. When you make a purchase between June 8th and June 30th, you'll automatically be entered to win one million, right, Dawson? Right now, visit Credit Karma. Credit. Right now, visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash win money to sign up for free and start winning instant karma. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase necessary. Exclusions in terms apply. See rules. Banking services provided by MVB Bank Incorporated, member of FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limit limits apply. All right. We'll take a quick break. Come back. Do the news right after this. Give me news with Gina Grass, the face on TMC, Joe Biden, Kamala, meet news with Gina, Gina Grass. The news with Gina Grad. I am now completely fascinated with Five Acres. I just want to tell you a couple things. There's a timeline. It opened in 1888. That facility was in downtown L.A. In 1921, they moved to Altadena, where your dad worked. And then I'm going through all the timeline, the timeline. Now, when your dad would have been there, uh, in, in 1981, Five Acres Therapeutic School opens for severely emotionally disturbed children. So yeah. is that who he was sort of tending to, I guess? That was me and my sister. Right. <laughs> Well, we'll those for free anyway. Uh, if I ate another one of these fucking flank steaks that tastes like gristle with uh, ricotta cottage That's cheese on, I'm going to fucking kill myself, old man. And you'd be right, too. That's right. Uh, so they have tons of programs. Like, I, they're an adoption agency now. They have tons of different programs. I, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Uh, let's talk another local story real quick. Uh, Tin Horn Flats. We may have a conclusion to this story, and it's not a great one. Uh, The months-long dispute between the popular sports bar, which we've talked about many times on this show, and the city of Burbank came to an end Tuesday morning after the owners of Tin Horn Flats were evicted from the property by the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. This is according to KFI News. The eviction is a separate issue from a temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction that was uh, issued by the L.A. County judge after the owners continued to operate despite uh, the health permit saying no. Yeah. Let me add a little bit to this because I I read the story and, and I was taken by the fact that the person who evicted the owner of the property had the same last name as the owner of right. the business they evicted. And I was like, what the fuck? Did the mom evict the son? I think the ex-wife. Gary goes like, yeah, ex-wife. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, it all makes sense. So uh, I think you'll like this quote, though. She got the property in the divorce. Wow. So in an interview with The New Yorker, owner Barrett LePagian said officials were attempting to take his business away. He said, honestly, if the rules came straight from God, I wouldn't do it. 
Uh, went to high school at Barrett. Yeah. My graduation class. So now what? I don't know. It's just, There's a lot of this going on in the world sort of in general, which is um, this thing started over really nothing in terms of whatever the... So it's basically, it's like saying... So it started over outdoor dining, which never turned out to be a thing. Right. I don't know why we ever shut that down. We're nuts. Fine. Then it then it took on a life of its own. And then 10 minutes later, everyone's like, well, there's nothing wrong with outdoor dining. It's like, it doesn't matter. We're mm-hmm. on to our own thing now. Well, so it's almost like you getting into a huge feud with a neighbor because you accuse them of you know stealing your jello mold or something you got off and running and then at some point you figured out that they never stole your jello right. mold but it didn't matter yeah, because it was still it was still on right. we're doing a lot of that i think people do it in relationships yeah. people do it you know sort of micro and macro right. and it's like i don't know my thing is is once we circle back to the thing that was inaccurate or didn't happen, then there's got to the be a way to apart. figure it out. Well, yes. and sorry, let me just say mm-hmm. that um, it is extra punitive now and ironic that on the day everything opens back up, they <laughs> get evicted. I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm wondering if there's a little bit of the uh, cancer patient going up with the pilot, you know, uh, it's all over, so let's fucking do this anyway because... I was thinking, why, why, why dig your heels in so much when the end is near? When you know mm-hmm. June fifteenth, this is all gonna, you know, lift, and we're all gonna go back to whatever. Did he know that the the ex wife was gonna give him the fucking boot? And he's like, I'm at this point, burn the it all down, scorched yeah. earth. Exactly. That that makes a lot of sense to me. Mm. Well, when the decree for no outdoor dining went down. I don't doubt that there was, was an element of like you know righteous I don't know, justice. I don't know what month that was, but. But well, this is a long time in the making, though, right? This doesn't happen all of a sudden. Divorce I'm, and property, and you know, and uh, I, I don't, I, I don't know when they got divorced. I have no idea. I don't know if they got divorced ten years ago and they were just running their business, or they got divorced fifteen minutes ago, and this is an issue. But well, either way, it made Barrett a folk hero. From someone who's been there, they just moved everything to their outdoor patio, right. and they were continuing with business. And I think when the out, I think. I think the problem is, is we said no indoor dining, only outdoor dining. And so businesses went through great measures to move outdoors Mm -hmm. and do all the things and get the heaters and put the shrubs up and do all the stuff. And they were all spent a bunch of money and a bunch of time and a bunch of calories. And then when they said no outdoor dining, which wasn't backed by any science, a very small number of them, including Tin Horn and Flats, went, fuck that. That's the only business we have. And... Depending on your wiring, they were probably at their saturation level. The California's, you know, got a lot of rules, and Burbank has more rules even than California. Like Burbank is super sticky with right. with rules, and that's probably what happened. But either way, uh, they'll be missed. <laughs> So yet, and something that is another eyesore to the community over the past year and a half is just another closed business with a lease sign and, f- and a cardboard, you know, boxes and Does shit. Still have a fence around it? I don't know. It had a real permanent fence around it. Um, now you couldn't get the city of Burbank to pick up a love seat that you put out <laughs> on the sidewalk, but you could. They're Johnny on the spot with the fencing yeah. on small businesses. They'll shut Ugh. you down. Yeah. Yeah, they may they may still get a check out of the the city of Burbank. Yeah, there's, oh there God. it is. It's got a real real fence around and, it. And how many you know sandbags in front of that door? Hundred. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, yeah. That looks great. That's that's a quality of life issue for the for the neighbors. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, so we talked to, with Chris about uh, people going crazy at the uh, stadium, and people are just losing it. Loosely, quickly, everywhere, always now. And the newest wild scene is a uh, McDonald's in Ravenna, Ohio. Ooh. Yeah. Theory. Um, I blame Starbucks. Oh. Everyone's beaked up on caffeine like all day, mm. every day. There, wow. there was no... When I was a kid... You didn't have coffee at four in the afternoon. Like it, it nobody did. It was like you'd go, beverage. you might go into a diner and have a cup of coffee mm-hmm. w- with your eggs, right. and then 
that was that was it. Right. I mean, there might be a coffee pot at a business, but take a look at the coffee pot. It's like it'd have cobwebs in mm-hmm. it and shit. And the stain on the bowl on the glass. Everybody's got themselves like a Red Bull or a mm-hmm. rock star mm-hmm. or a grande latte, yep. whatever. Then their own now there's some pharmaceuticals involved, mm-hmm. like everyone's on something. And the, and the coffee's weaponizing it. Yeah, like it's it's supercharging yeah. whatever the farm. So everyone's got like something in their veins these days. They're chewing Nicorette. They got a Red Bull. Mm. They got a little Valium wow. in them or something. And they're fucking, it's kind of, can't, can't account for nothing. Right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's give a, a quick peek to what happened here. So. This customer went crazy because she wasn't allowed to mix all three flavors in her slushie. Why that's a rule, I don't know. But she was literally in Ohio at a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Uh, Later identified as Sharice Helena Cleveland. uh, Decided to walk behind the counter and get herself her slushie. Workers tried to stop her. They start throwing punches. I have two clips. Why is that not allowed? it, this whole thing could have been so avoided. So far, I'm on her side. But I'm going to show you what sh- what happens. And if you listen closely, this is maybe 45 seconds. She gives sort of a weird explanation as to why she's going crazy. But just this is the first clip. She's already behind the counter. Don't leave. Don't leave. Push in. Oh. Just really hits the boss. Don't touch her. By the way, get away from her. <laughs> Get your hands up. Mm. She just threw a right punch. Get your hands up. Yeah. Pushes her hard again. Okay, so listen. She says, I'm sorry, I've been up all day. And then grabs the boss's mask, slams it down, and... Throws everything day. off the counter. So, all right, she's. I'm telling you, she's on medication. She's yeah. on a bunch of anti so, this and a bunch of anti sounds that. Sounds like it, especially since she and and there's more to this, and it gets crazier. But she does take a minute, and she's like, "I've been up all day." Like, oh, what does that even mean? But there's Definitely something going, you. right. So then workers showed uh, a lot of restraint. Nice palate cleanser for the Lily White guys going at it at the mm-hmm. stadium mm-hmm. for me. That's right. Uh, they back. they showed That's some restraint, right. although the, the boss. Just didn't, asking. The boss didn't just saying. seem <laughs> just something. <laughs> the mm-hmm. boss not super confrontational. The her employee very confrontational. Get away from my boss. Get away from my boss. And now this uh, is what uh, happens. Uh, okay, the saddest tableau in this entire yeah. picture here, yeah. this tapestry of of humanity. Yeah, is the seventy three year old guy coming from behind the I'm grill? I'm so glad you that, said that. That guy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> That's part of my What Went Wrong series, where I want to take my son and daughter to go to the McDonald's to find the elderly guy working the grill, to find the guy at the Home Depot standing in the plumbing aisle who with the vest on yes. and go, what went wrong? How I'm, did we get here? I, I, was, I bet myself I, that you would I, notice him. And by the way, I will not accept... Oh, I was a highly decorated engineer, Lockheed, for you know fifty years. I retired. I just want to stay busy. Yeah. Well, no, 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 the, no. you're working with handicapped kids. You're not fucking making fillet of fish. Yeah, you're not. You're not consulting. Right. Um, and also, I get it. He's elderly, and we don't know his story. But like, feel free to jump in and help your coworkers. The, these little ladies who. But I'm going to show you this these next are, clip. These must be confusing times to anyone over 70. Yeah. They've never seen two women fight their entire life. And now they're just seeing chicks just fucking throw down at every target. Well, they they got to be like, I, what is going on? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. So in the next clip, the woman, uh, Sharice, goes and gets behind the uh, soda fountain. There's fills, more? Yes. Fills up some ice. And it's like, what is she doing with that ice? She is going to go, I'm going to tell for people who can't see the clip, she's going to go back around the corner, throw the ice at them, and then receive the beatdown of her life. Oh, my so, God. Here we well, go. let me tell you, I, I feel like the manager got her mask ripped off as the one who's going to throw the punches. Oh, you, oh, no. It's the employee. The one who wants to exact vengeance for her boss. Mm. Here we go. Wrestles her to the ground. And watch this. See if she throws an uppercut. Oh, that's Grabs brown and that's brown and pound. That's brown and pound. Brown and pound. She says, "I'll destroy you." World star. 
Oh, people are so gross. So then, I, she, I like that she's wearing the intercom headpiece. Yeah. So someone's sitting in their van, like waiting, just going, hey, cunt, I fucking buck, you new asshole. So can uh, I add cheese? So I supersize that for, oh, bitch, I'll bust your fucking press on nail off in your cornea, cunt. Uh, okay, I got my kids in the car. Is it a happy meal cut off? And, bitch, I'll fucking kick your ass. Like, Daddy, gotta be, see if they're SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Never she's got that fucking that. head thing yeah. on. She was working the drive yep. through You're right. So mm. she takes her down. The cops come. And when the cops come, Cheyenne, the customer, starts pounding on the women again, the workers. There's so they, work. wow. they cuff her. In front of the cops. Yes. That's why the cops, cops are like, well, we know who to deal with right now. No longer deterrence no. for people throwing punches at no. each other. Used to be people got their shit together uh. pretty fast when the popo rolled yeah, up. No. Not, they are witnessing her. Not anymore. Punching the employees. Unclear. Again, why she wasn't allowed to mix her slushies, but you'd think that she would have reacted better. Do you guys remember when the cops would show up at a house party and you're a teenager and everyone just had to drop their beers? You're terrified. And just, and just run? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, of course. The cops just meant something. Now it's like, fuck them. Yeah. Jump on them or twerking on their hood. <laughs> and the cop that showed up looked like the pastiest, like least confrontational young man on the planet, but he still handcuffed her. Um, there was a video also of a guy. <laughs> so they had to close, I think, 17 CVSs or yes, Rite Aids or something in like San Francisco yeah. area because. Again, uh, so unintended circumstances. So we go consequences. consequences. Yeah, unintended consequences. So we go, we're tired of locking up all these people for petty crimes. Mm-hmm. No longer. So then someone goes, well, then we'll just make it nine hundred and ninety nine dollars mm-hmm. and anything under. We're not going to lock those people up. And then the people quickly figure this out. And then they go to the CVSs mm-hmm. and they just start ripping off things up to that amount. Right. And now the CVS goes out of business. And then the same people who made the law go, how dare you leave our community? Uh-huh. These are communities of need. You know, it's like, sure. yeah, yeah, we're trying to run a fucking business and you guys don't enforce the law. So right. we're getting all our shit ripped off. So we're going to pack it in and move. To a nice neighborhood. Right. And then then the underserved oh. community is now less served. The irony, though, is that these are nice neighborhoods. This is San Francisco. The properties with a million dollars each. Right. You know what Scary. I mean? It's, well, uh, yeah, it's not nice. It's just a less enforced. Or so, more, sorry, more enforced. Yeah. It's so the the <laughs> there's a video. 17 stores closed in San Francisco. The guy with past. the trash bag in the bike? Yes. Yeah. guy just rode his bike uh, in and just started bike. Fill, oh, it was a so lift like bike. A sorry. stolen bike. They're accessories. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's consistent and just yeah. started filling his garbage bag and just rode it rode it out of the store. Well, a security guard and a customer are filming him and he's like, no mind. And from what the news said, because one guy was like, well, you know, if you're stealing, you probably need it. And the anchor, the woman anchor was like, "Uh, those are hair products. It's Mm. not vitamins or, you know. Hope we got some body on tap. That's right. And the guy made a half-hearted attempt to swipe out. Rides right out. The the rules for the security guards is you can't confront anyone. So, And why uh, should you? Are you getting paid enough for that? uh, No, but why we have security guards. Like, So the new, so if you're, a junkie, and the rules are you can go up to nine hundred ninety nine dollars, and the security guy can't do shit. Well, then why not invitation. head on in and, yeah. and do what you got to do? And, and this guy's just expediting the thing instead of leaving the bike on the curb like everyone else. Right, full ride it right in. And when we talk about bystanders, was it really necessary for what sounded like an able bodied young gentleman in McDonald's not to pull the women off each other, but to yell "World Star" World Star. and keep? <laughs> And keep filming. That was nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about something a little more, uh, a little more upbeat. And somebody that Adam, I think you could definitely hang with. You would love this guy. A guy named Nate Carroll of Winnicani, uh, Wisconsin. He broke a world record by completing one million five hundred thousand two hundred thirty-one push-ups within the span of twelve months, and used the challenge to raise money for the Tunnels to Towers Foundation. That's a group that helps housing for families of officers and firefighters who were killed in the line of duty. Nate averaged forty-one hundred push-ups a day. Sometimes got to seven thousand, all while you know working and been being a dad or whatever. His advice. Now tell me if this sounds familiar. His advice about how he accomplished this task is. Even goals that seem impossible can be achieved when they are broken down into daily manageable chunks. Yes. And we talk about eating a Buick? Yes. Ground it up, 
powderize it, <laughs> eat a teaspoon every morning, and you could eat a Buick yeah. eventually. Yeah. He feels the same way. Got to break stuff off into small chunks, like 7,000 push-ups a day. <laughs> <laughs> small, manageable chunks. Right. Manageable, manageable for everybody, chunks. For all of us. Well, let's... Yeah. Who's verifying this? Because what do you mean oh, well, throughout the day? Well, it's a world day, record. I know it's a world record, but could you have someone dispatch to you? Probably, f- he could flip his smartphone on or a camera on while he's doing the push-ups. Yeah, I guess you got to chronicle it. Yeah. yeah, I guess. There's a lot of rules about how you chronicle. I mean, of course, Guinness has specific rules. Right. I don't know if this is a verified by Guinness or just he just did it himself and it's a new story. That's I would good. hope not. Gave the money to the, the thing. Good I see Mark yeah. Wahlberg, I think, does like the spokesperson for those. A bridge and tunnel, I think. Uh, t- so, uh, tunnel and it's bridge? T- tunnel to towers. Tunnels to tower. Tunnel yeah. to towers. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about another guy that uh, is following in your footsteps, Adam. A night of heavy drinking led one Chicago man to find a hangover cure while pulling off what everyone's calling an impressive feat. Dan O'Connor woke up the morning of June 13th of last year with a brutal hangover. And instead of a little hair of the dog, he walked down to Lake Michigan, dove in. He said it felt so good, he decided to do it. Every single day. I remember this is Chicago. On Saturday, a crowd of friends and fans watched O'Connor take the plunge in the lake for the 365th consecutive day. He admits it was tough to do in the winter (laughs) when the lake was icy, but he loved doing it every day and said he could, quote, dive in the water and it would clear the palate and cleanse the day and start anew. Well, if you think about... And he's fundraising, too. I love drinking. you (laughs) you You think about that feeling of being hungover... Um, and again, if you fell off a crab boat in Alaska, you would never think, well, I'm in the Bering Straits and I'm hungover. Right. You just go, I'm fucking freezing. Like it is a, a little, you know, three stooges, like your shin hurts. So pound your thumb with a hammer and all you'll focus on your your thumb, but it does, does wake your shit up. Yeah. Does get you, it does get you going. All right, we should uh, bring it home because I think Anderson Silva's got, Silva's going to uh, Let's do that. In. All right, I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. I'm going to fuck your boy up. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. A lot of fighting going on yeah. out there. You guys need a little uh, humble CBD that's based right. out of Southern California. Humble makes insanely great hemp-derived CBD products for any occasion. Humble's committed to helping you stay grounded no matter what life brings. Their line of CBD products is geared to help you focus, relax, recover, and more. Only for my listeners. Humble is offering 25% off your first order. That is site-wide. Just use the promo code ADAM and you can save on your entire order site-wide. So what do you do? Head to www.humble.com. CBD.com and choose any product that meets your needs. And again, once you go there, you'll get 25% off your first order, but you got to let them know I sent you. Use the promo code Adam. Stay grounded with humble CBD. Well, legendary UFC fighter and boxer as well. I think he's had a couple of professional boxing matches. I'll look into that. Uh, Anderson, the spider, Silva, on right after this. Anderson, the spider, Silva, has joined us, former UFC middleweight champion, kind of a all-timer UFC, definitely um, pound-for-pound guy. Guy grew up, I didn't grow up watching, but as I was watching, uh, any fan of the UFC is a huge fan of Anderson Silva's. Good, good to, uh, good to meet you. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your time. Yeah, my my pleasure. I was going to be here anyway. You're you're at the gym right now. Yeah, I go start my training right now. Uh, the fight. It's a tribute to the Kings, and it is uh, coming up Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. On Fight TV, that's F I T E dot TV, and not only is Anderson fighting, but the uh, co-main event is Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. against Hector Camacho Jr., which sounds insane. Julio's record is one hundred and seven and six, so that's a guy who's had a few pro 
pro fights. And Camacho Jr. is uh, no slouch either at 58 wins and uh, seven losses as well. So, uh, Anderson, uh, you're, you're obviously always good with your hands. UFC is a mixed martial arts game. This is a boxing game. You, you do obviously train in boxing and, and, and when you train in mixed martial arts. And you've had one professional boxing match? Well, I have uh, amateur uh, fights, a couple amateur fights, and uh, two professionals. But, of course, this is the different level, you know. But I'm very excited, you know. I'm very, I'm very happy to be here, and that's my, myself in putting uh, something with my coach teach me and inside the, the ring, you know. And for me, it's just for... Uh, challenge myself, you know. Are you guys going to be wearing 10-ounce gloves, 8-ounce gloves? It's 10-ounce. 10 10-ounce. 10 so that's got to be nice <laughs> for you after being used to being hit with the, I don't know, zero-ounce UFC gloves, right? Uh, I mean, hopefully... The, I think so. <laughs> uh, are, are, what's your standing with the UFC? Are you retired from the UFC? Are you going to come back? What's the plan there? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I finished my contract with UFC. I'm free. And uh, now I just try to enjoy every single challenge I have, you know. Maybe after that, I go fight Jiu-Jitsu, maybe fight Muay Thai, kickboxing. I don't know. But right now, I just try to enjoy my moments, enjoy the life, and doing something I love is fight. Who do you? Uh, what do you think about the UFC right now? Like, um, are you liking the John Jones fight uh, that may be coming up with? Um... Oh God, what's his name? Well, I'm suspect Francis and Ganya. Sorry, John Jones for me is my little brother, you know, and uh, I love John Jones a lot. And um, I think John Jones started training for many, many years uh, to back to fight, you know, and uh, I'm very excited for see John Jones fight again. Uh, how well do you know John Jones? Well, I, I. Big friend with John Jones for many, many years, you know, when he started in UFC. And uh, I have an amazing relationship with uh, uh, John Jones. I don't, I don't, I've never interviewed John Jones. I don't, I don't know that much really? about him. You need to do that. I would love to do it. He's a very good guy. And is he uh, going to be able to get up big enough to fight Francis and Ganya? Wow. You know, Fight is fight, but uh, I believe in John Jones have a chance for prove how is the best pound for pound in this sport. You know, the uh, Anderson defeated or defended, I should say, the uh, title ten times before uh, getting beat by Chris Weidman. If anyone remembers that fight, Anderson was clowning Chris Weidman, and Chris Weidman punched him while he was clowning. And that was the end of the fight. I, do you want to? You probably don't want to discuss that, but it, it, it's a it's a it's a clip that everyone has uh, seen. What what happened in that moment? Well, you know, it's fight is a is a very interesting. In one moment, you make one fail, you're done. You know, you can you can. It's a too much details. You know, and uh, Chris is an amazing fight. And came the, the champion in UFC, you know, I respect a lot. In uh, both fights, this is so amazing. And uh, I think is uh, the second when I broke my leg is not good for us, no. for sport, you know. But it's a good, entertaining fight, you know. Uh, yes. So our we just had a little camera snafu there for a second. So what do you expect? What I I don't know who's favorite. Maybe Chris can uh, look this up for the uh, for the betting favorites. I mean, um, obviously your your opponent has a lot of ring experience, a lot of boxing experience, but you've got 
tons of ring experience or more octagon experience. What do you uh, what do you expect Saturday night? Well, I expect to do my job, you know, and uh, enjoy the moment, improve my respect for the box fans, you know, and uh, showing my respect for the fighters in this sport, you know, because is is not about uh, prove nothing for anybody. It's just to doing something special for my fans and showing my respect for boxing work, you know. How, you know, we have, you grew up in poverty in in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. Um, we have poverty here in the United yes. States, but it's not, it's not that kind of poverty. Like I was just watching a thing on Roberto Duran and growing up in poverty in Panama is a much different kind of growing up in poverty in the United States. So... What was your childhood like? How much poverty was there? Well, it's in my second house right now, you know. Um, is um, in Brazil is uh, so amazing, you know. I have uh, friends, I have a family in Brazil, and the United States is my second house right now. My family live in LA, and uh, I'm so happy, you know, because I have a amazing good memories to my country you know every single time i have a i have a space in my job in my life i go to visit my parents my friends my family in brazil but how did you grow up in brazil amazing amazing so you were happy even though you didn't have money or <laughs> i i mean um, i mean i'm not poor guy, you know, and uh, I grew up in a good family, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm lucky because it's not for everybody, you know. It's not about Brazil. It's every single uh, country have the same problems. You have uh, uh, people uh, rich, people not rich, you know, but I grew up in a good family and I'm so happy, you know, because every everything my my mom and my dad teach me, I pass for my sons and continue to do it was for it, the word, you know? Was UFC something you were thinking about when you were younger? Because USC wasn't really established back then. I mean, I guess it kind of, I remember it, you know, from about 20 years ago, they had fights that were kind of fights with Gracie's and geese and, and things like that beforehand. But UFC didn't really come in or mixed martial arts didn't really come into its own until you were maybe a teenager or early twenties. Right. Wow. I remember when I, when I start watching UFC, I just look at the Hoist Gracie, Kenshin Rock and, uh, you know, Kimbo in the, the other fighters, you know, and I'm saying, wow, one day I go fight this. And I remember my friend start training jiu-jitsu because Hoysi, uh changed the world, you know. And uh, Hickson Gracie in Japan and Hoysi in, in, in U.S. Uh, showed for the world how much the jiu-jitsu is special, you know, and the Brazilian jiu-jitsu is special. And I'm happy because um, everything I have right now, in this sport, I have because the Gracie family opened the door for us, you know, and uh, I'm so happy to train Jiu-Jitsu, to grow up watching Hoist Gracie and Hickson and the Gracie family doing something special for us. When was, uh, how old were you when you had your first mixed martial arts fight? Um, 21. And do you remember where it was and how much you got paid? Yeah, I fight um, in uh, the city um, very far to my home. And I take the bus with the whole team. And I take uh, three fi four fights in the same night. <laughs> and um, I don't remember how much I the people pay me, but... It's a very interesting fight, you know, because I remember I talked to my 
my coach, jiu-jitsu coach, uh, they say, I never go fight this again. This is crazy sport. And uh, my coach uh, just look at me and I say, okay, don't worry. You, you go back home and you go see. And I continue to fight and continue training jiu-jitsu and uh, I love the sport, you know. Uh, did you win all four of those fights? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Are you getting your hands taped right now? Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> Let me show you. That's a nice. Oh, you do. Okay, one second. <laughs> He's in the gym. Sorry. He's in Mexico. You're in Mexico, right? Let's get in your hands taped. Yes, I am in Mexico right now. And uh, you're getting a good, you're getting a, not just a rap, you're getting a good, a good tape. So you're going to start, you're going to start working out in the next, uh, next couple of minutes. <laughs> what do you, what do you start off with? Shadow boxing, skipping rope? Like what's your, what's your first move? Uh, I start uh, uh, in a bike, uh -huh. in a jump rope for a couple of minutes, third minutes. And I start training. And how much uh, are you watching? Uh, are you watching film of uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and putting together a plan like you would if you were going into the uh, octagon? No, this part is for my coach. I just try to keep my focus in my mind for the training here and uh, for watching the clips and the videos for my opponent is my coach do it. I don't, don't do that. I just keep my focus in one thing. Well, the fight, it's called the uh, Tribute to the Kings. Anderson is going against uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And that'll be Saturday, the uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific on Fight, F-I-T-E TV. And uh, you can watch the co-main event, which is uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., the man who's... He's a, he's 58. He's only 58. I feel like I've been, I feel like I saw that guy fight all through the nineties and maybe in late the eighties and the nineties. How can he only be 58 years young? And, uh, he's going to be fighting uh, Hector Camacho jr. Which is, uh, th this is, this is insane. Do you have any thoughts on that fight? Anderson, sorry. Wow. You know, First of all, I'm very lucky. And the second one, you know, Camacho and Julio Cesar Chavez is the legends in this sport. You know, imagine you can see the Muhammad Ali today to fight. You know, it's so amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy, you know. I'm so so happy to be here and do something I love is fight in a, in a different sport, boxing. You know, it's a good challenge for myself. I like to learn a lot. And I learn a lot with my coach here and my my sparring partners, you know, little Nico, my son Gabriel, and Eliezer, you know, and coach Nico helped me a lot. Coach Dora is my my training coach for many years for boxing. And uh, I stay with my family, with my team. It's so amazing. Well, we wish you uh, luck on uh, Saturday night and uh, tell people you can uh, shoot Anderson a, a tweet. Wow. At... It's a very interesting. What? What's going on? Spider Anderson oh, is I'm for sorry. a tweet. Sorry. Yeah, it's delayed. Sorry. Uh, Spiderkick.com is, uh, is the website. Anderson Silva, thanks for joining me today and good luck on Saturday night. Oh, thank you. I think Saturday night, the people go see an amazing show for everybody, you know, especially here uh, for the, the people like boxing, you know. It's so amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anderson. Thanks for your time, sir. <clears throat> thank you. Bye. Good luck on uh, on Saturday night. It's insane how nice UFC fighters are. Maybe we're just on a roll this week. But uh, amongst the friendliest people on the planet, unlike folks that go in for slushies at McDonald's. I think there's something about purging yourself every single day. I mean, imagine, imagine what your sort of temperature would be at if you literally punched a heavy bag every day until you could throw no more punches. And then I got hold of you later on that day. You'd just be the most mellow dude on the planet. I think the thing is, is people think they're going to throw more punches, but the reality is, is you're all 
punched out. All right. I don't know what your uh, what your. Uh, oh, I just want to like listeners reads. know um, we're going to be playing Tales from the Cheap on the next show. So if you guys have a good story, give oh, us a call out at uh, okay. 1.30 p.m. Pacific. A uh, plug. All right, and uh, Golden Colorado Buffalo Rose this Friday, Saturday. Uh, Sonny will be there, so come on out and uh, say hi. Kyle Dunnigan's going to be on Saturday for the live pad uh, pod. Max, uh, Max Pad is going to be playing there as well, a little pre-cocktail party. Anchorage, Alaska coming up July 3rd as well. Live shows everywhere. Go to AdamCarolla.com. And until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Gina Grad and Ball Bryan and Anderson the Spider Silva saying mahalo.